welcome back welcome back first things first so the way i'm going to do this i'm going to speak about the person and what they need to do so on the function i'm going to put the person and what they need to do so for example the owner is going to be making rotors emailing people sending contracts out that's going to be the stuff that the owner has to do the service name is going to be the hardware and software needed so to do all of this they're probably going to have um, internet they're probably going to have a laptop or some pc they're probably going to have a printer they're going to have access to windows operating system or mac os the operating system is not so much of an important thing it's mainly uh, the software that they actually use other than the operating system so maybe microsoft office and if there's a specific rotor software that you know of that you've researched and found you can mention that as well and then I'm going to over here describe how the hardware and software will be used to carry out the tasks. So, for example, we mentioned rotor, right? So we're probably going to use the Internet. We're probably going to use Chrome. We're probably going to use some form of rotor type system to let people know when they have stuff to do. So here I have the person has been the owner. The tasks I have as hire and manage staff. So I've said contracts and rotors specifically. You can add as much as you want. I've said also market the business. I believe this is a restaurant, but I just said market business. Whatever your owner or a person in your company has to do, read through the paper again and highlight exactly what that person has to do and put all of those tasks under here. The next thing that this person has to do is to update the website. Let me zoom in a bit more. Um, and then on the service name, I've only put the hardware and software. I have not been totally exhaustive here. So this is not a complete list of everything. This is just something I thought of the top of my head. I also had a look on the um, the examiner's report, stole a few ideas from there. So the hardware I would recommend is a laptop, not a desktop PC for this particular company. They don't seem to need a lot of power. So the average laptop for two, three hundred pounds will be perfectly fine for this person. All they're doing is some basic admin stuff, sending a few emails, maybe printing things, backing up files, checking over applications, marketing the website and updating the website. That's perfectly fine. I've also said an Android smartphone because I'm a lover of Android and it's just so much cheaper than iPhones in general. I said a printer and I said a firewall. Yes, I said firewall and that is a hardware firewall. If I quickly show you what that looks like, they kind of look like a switch or a router to be fair, um, but this is what they are. This is an actual firewall. I'm not saying to get the most expensive one here, but any small, cheap, decent firewall is going to be better than nothing at all. Next, um, for software, I have Office 365. And Office 365, again, comes with um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, probably publisher, it comes with Outlook for email, it comes with Microsoft Teams for messaging, it comes with uh, quite a few other apps, but I'm going to stick to the main ones that this person might need. I haven't listed them here, but maybe listing them is not a bad idea. I might as well do that as well. So I'm going to say Word, this person will use Word, they might use Access because they want to have a database of the staff. They might use Excel because they're probably going to deal with numbers in some way. They might use Outlook as well. I, I already added email. But I'm just adding everything I think I'll need. Definitely Teams because Teams can be installed on the laptop, on tablets, on mobile phones. And this is a really good way to actually um, let people know, well, just message people in general. And also, I didn't even think of this before now, you could use Teams for the rotor as well. Because if, if, if person A says, I'm free on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what you could do as a manager is log into Teams go onto their calendar and add the times that you want them to work and it will pop up on their phone as well so that's quite a good one uh, next we have cloud email I'm, i said cloud email because you can have an email server in the restaurant but i don't think that would make much sense personally because you don't want to have everything in one basket and if something goes down at the restaurant you're kind of left in the dark I, I also said cloud web server so something like wix squarespace wordpress something again that's not on site that's not at the restaurant so they could have a website server at the restaurant they could have um, an email server at the restaurant they could have a file server at the restaurant but having those options alone don't make much sense and maybe having both of those options for a company like this might not make the most sense as well next one i have i said cloud file server so maybe something like google drive onedrive for this one i would probably use onedrive because we already have office 365 so let's just say for argument's sake, this person is paying the monthly subscription, however much that costs. They get most of this stuff in that subscription without paying anything extra. The next thing I had is, um, I would say, physical, PHYS, physical file server. And this could just be, a file server could just be a 200-pound hard drive connected to your router 
so you can access it from anywhere and you can backup files to it once you're on the network as well. That's what I would recommend for a small company, but I would put this behind the hardware firewall and make sure that um, no one can get access to it physically. Um, I said anti-malware software, so well, anti-malware already means anti-malware software, but anti-malware with a firewall. So choose one that maybe has a firewall built in, or if you wanted to go and look for a specific one that that um, just does the antivirus on one side and then the firewall is a separate program, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm going overboard here as I normally do to try and be ex as exhaustive in the lists as possible without being crazy. So I'm saying two-factor authentication app. On my phone, I've got the Microsoft authentication app. I've got the Google authentication app, meaning whenever I try to sign into like my PlayStation um, app on my phone or the website or even on my PS5 at home as well, I type in my username, I type in my password, and I also have to go to that app and put in the code that's in that app so that it's very, very hard to hack. I've said a rota app as well. You can choose a rota app you want. You can research free rota apps and you can find quite a few. Or you could use Microsoft Teams as well. It's up to you. And again, all I'm mentioning here is the hardware and software that this one person, let's go back over here, that this one person is going to be using. If you have multiple people, they're going to use slightly different things. But this one person needs to do these actions mentioned here. And these actions need these pieces of hardware and these pieces of software to do it. And I've mentioned encryption software as well. That's going to be on um, maybe on the backup server. Sorry, the file server. So when they transfer anything to it, it's encrypted straight away. Now, let me go over to my service description. It's quite long, but I try to give as much detail as possible. The first thing I said, and again, you don't have to use a laptop. I only use a laptop because I looked at this company, looked at what this person needs to do and think, hmm, a laptop might make more sense for this person because if they're the owner, they're going to want to move around. They might take the laptop home. They might want to do some tasks from home some days. They might not want to drive to the, um, the restaurant just to order some stuff. They could sit at home in bed and order some stuff. They could sit at home in bed and set the router. They could email people. They don't have to come into work. Whereas if, if it were a desktop, they would have to go and find a desktop and sit down and do it. A laptop can be used from anywhere. So I've said the laptop will be used to complete most or all of the admin tasks. You could use the mobile phone to some degree as well for most of this. Because to be fair, most people use mobile phones now for everything. When hiring staff, the laptop can be used to post a job advert on multiple job websites. That's number one. Um, once candidates have applied for the job, the laptop is once again used to go through the applications and reply via email or any means deemed fit. So whichever way they want to reply. Sometimes it might be via the website directly. Sometimes it might make more sense to email the person directly. That's all it means. Uh, once hired, the owner can use the laptop and printer to email and print a copy of the contract for safekeeping. So... Again, I'm trying to tie in in this one, making use of the laptop and the printer. And that's what I'm going to try to do back and forth, back and forth constantly. So, so that we make use of everything in hardware and software um, in an obvious way. A copy of the contract and the worker's details can then be saved to the local file server and a backup will be sent to the cloud file server. So I mentioned earlier, a PC or a hard drive connected to the router or the switch. And then that way, we can simply have um, our files being backed up. And once our files are backed up to that main one, the main one in the restaurant, we can then send it to the cloud one. So maybe Google Drive, OneDrive, probably OneDrive is the best option because again, we have Office 365. The laptop can also be used to create and manage staff routers as well as help with, I spelled that wrong, help with marketing uh, the business by possibly making flyers or putting adverts up on websites such as Uber Eats, Deliveroo, and Just Eat. Nice and simple. Finally, the website can be updated from the laptop as well. And again, because it's a cloud, um, a cloud website server, so maybe I think I mentioned something like, uh, let's put this in brackets, Wix. There's Wix. I know there's S-Q-U-A-R-E, Squarespace. I know there is, um, I use WordPress quite a bit. So this is not something that the owner has in the restaurant. They connect to the internet. They go to these websites and you, you can actually edit anything you want from these websites and it makes it super, super easy. This person has to have no specific web development skills. They simply need to know what they want to have on the website and roughly how they want it to look. And these websites are going to make it super, super easy. The mobile phone can be used to keep uh, in contact with customers, sorry, with staff on contractors by using a messaging app such as Teams. And I mentioned this one comes built in with Office 365. 
This would also be a good way to manage staff rotors and email communication, the mobile phone. So I've tied in the mobile phone here as well. The cloud web server would be much more scalable, meaning you can handle more traffic when it comes, <clears throat> sorry, when times get busy versus an on-site server. So let me give context here again. The cloud web server is going to be held. There, there are three main cloud companies in the world or in the UK right now. The main one is going to be Amazon, which is AWS, Amazon Web Services. Um, I don't know, remember which one is second, but the second and third place would either be Google's GCP, Google Cloud Platform. And the last one is going to be Microsoft with their, with their Microsoft Azure, A-Z-U-R-E. Those are the three main cloud people in the world. Well, in the UK now. I think China has Alibaba and a few others as well. Where, why I say this, your web server at your restaurant, let's just say your web server even costs a hundred thousand pounds, which is a very expensive web server, but very powerful. Your hundred thousand website server can maybe, let's say for argument's sake, take um, 50,000 requests a day, roughly, right? Your one web server versus Amazon's Microsoft or Google's web server, Amazon and Microsoft and Google are multi-trillion, well, maybe multi-billion dollar companies. Your one server is probably what they have just to, to count how many servers they have, right? Just as a random example. So their systems are going to be much more powerful, much more capable, and in, in terms of that, much more scalable. So your website can only handle 50,000 per day. Their website servers or their servers can probably handle a trillion requests per day. And I've also said this improves availability as the website content will most likely be on multiple servers. Let me try and give context as well here. What that means is when it's on the local server in the office or at the restaurant, it's only in that one location unless you choose to manually back it up somewhere else. When you use Amazon's web service, uh, Google Cloud Platform or Microsoft Azure, if you're going to be a company, a restaurant, there's most likely, I'm saying 99.9% .9 chance that your content is backed up somewhere else. So let's just say for argument's sake, you're in London and maybe the closest server to you is in Scotland. Even though it's in Scotland and you're in London, there's probably going to be a backup in Birmingham as well or Manchester as well. I don't know where. So if something happens to the main one in Scotland, it will simply route traffic to the one in Birmingham or maybe route traffic to the one in Manchester. So your website technically never goes down for your customers and you can keep making money. The la oh, not the last one. A local file server would be good for keeping a copy of employees' documentation. The owner should ideally also use a cloud service or backup in the event of a disaster. So I, I think I mentioned this before. Even though I have stuff on site, on my hard drive, on my backup, on my file server, it's a very good idea to use maybe OneDrive as well. I believe, I think my school gives me unlimited storage. So I'm, I'm just backing stuff up 24-7 all the time. Everything I have on my laptop is always backed up. The local file server should have a hardware firewall and a host-based firewall. Hardware firewall is that thing I showed you earlier. A host-based firewall is just the antivirus you would have installed on the PC. And most of them nowadays come with some form of firewall software, as well as some form of encryption to prevent third parties from viewing the information if it is stolen. So we know what encryption is again. This is just jumbling the stuff that we have, Word document images, audio notes, messages, uh, songs, jumbling that information so that if someone were to steal that server, steal that hard drive and take it home and they plug it into their PC, they won't be able to ac actually access anything or see anything sensible. And finally, I've got two-factor authentication app, which uh, will allow the owner to keep files very secure. This coupled with the hardware firewall Anti-malware will ensure the Data Protection Act is being adhered to, simply meaning with all of this stuff in place, if something were to happen and somebody put in a, a, a complaint or something, they could be like, listen, we did everything that we could do. We had the hardware firewall right next to the router, so the router was plugged into the hardware firewall, so it was harder for people to get into the network, number one. Every single device that we have in the company um, is, is being... Um, um, we have anti-malware software installed in it, apologies. So maybe, let's say, it's Kaspersky, uh, McAfee, whichever one. Um, and then that coupled with the two-factor authentication app. So every time you have to log into one of the systems, you have to put in your username, your password. Maybe even they, they'll, they'll, they'll text you half of the code you need to put into your mobile phone. And then the other half of the code is going to be in the two-factor authentication app. So this is how I would do it. This is very, very exhaustive in my opinion. You don't need to go this detailed. But if you do go this detailed, 
I think you're pretty much guaranteed a distinction if if you mention the person who's going to be um, doing all these tasks. And again, the tasks that they need to complete are going to be completed or be done with these pieces of hardware and software. And over here, you simply mention how you're going to make use of how the person, sorry, not how you, but how that person is going to make use of the hardware and software and be as detailed as you can. Now, I don't like reading paragraphs. I break everything down into bullet points, into sentences, so that when you read it, when, when I'm reading it, it's very easy for me to read. If you want to do one massive paragraph, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Once all the information is there, you should be good. I was going to do a second video with another um, description, but I thought instead of doing that, that one was pretty detailed. So I'm going to leave it as it is, and I'm going to simply come down here and maybe look at a few other people or a few other persons or things that could be used. So another thing that they mentioned is that there is going to be a manager at this restaurant or at this company. You need to ask yourself, what will this manager need to do? And then just as we did before, think about the hardware and software that they will need. The next person we have is the host. Think about what the host will do and the hardware and software they will need. Now, straight away, I can think of um, Office 365 as well, maybe. They might have access to the laptops at some point. They might need to sign on. So um, they're probably going to have a mobile phone with Teams on there, email on there, the Rota software on there. They're probably going to have anti-malware software on there as, as well. So some firewall, they're probably going to have access to the, wi um, the wireless access points of the WAP. They're probably going to have access to um, the servers at, I don't know, whatever the person needs. So think about what that person needs to do first and then think about what the person needs. Next, we have the chef. The chef is going to be in the kitchen. The chef is going to have access to maybe a tablet or maybe a screen above their head so that they can see, so on and so forth. Now, this thing here is not, this section here, this, is, this isn't a person, but it's a thing instead. So the cloud servers is a massive part of everything, I think, because I've said I want a file server on the cloud, I want a web server on the cloud, and I want some form of rotor service or some form of app. That's going to be cloud as well because it's not being hosted at the company. So think about the thing is going to be the, um, the, the cloud servers, and the thing that the cloud server needs to do, file server, website server, rotor service, um, uh, website hosting and all of that stuff. Think about the hardware and software needed for that as well. In this case, it's probably going to be just the internet. So it's probably going to be um, a router or a modem. It's probably going to be a backup router or a modem, which is going to be 4G or 5G. It's going to be a laptop. It's probably going to be a tablet. It's probably going to be a PC. And that's how we access these services. And then again, go into detail over here. Next, we have the bar staff. Pretty similar to... Um, the chef and the host, they're going to have access to more or less the same type of things. They're going to need to access to Wi-Fi, routers, so on and so forth. Now we have the accountant. The accountant is an external person. This is not somebody hired directly by the company. They don't get a monthly salary. What they get is whenever the company wants them to do some work, they bring them in, they do the work, they pay them for that work only. So this is a contractor. So think, think of this person like um, a plumber or an electrician coming to your parents' house. The your parent is not going to pay them monthly or yearly to to oversee what's going on they're simply going to say okay that plug in my son's room doesn't work the switch in my dog's room doesn't work how much is the electrician going to charge that's what this person is they come in fix that one problem then leave and then the next one i have is uh the external person again we have an it support so what will they be doing um, most likely checking over security setting stuff up so think about the hardware that this person will need I think the IT person will probably need exactly the same hardware as the owner and um, um, and maybe the accountant as well, but more so the owner because they're going to have some access to almost everything because they're going to set up everything, they're going to check everything, they're going to update everything, they're going to make sure everything works. I did IT support twice, sorry, my, my bad. Um, so this is how I would do it. And again, I'm not going to do everything, so go back and just watch over this section and see how detailed I was in my description. Good luck. The next part is activity three theory.